Welcome to the very first episode of The Forecast in Five. I'm your host, Seth Katz. The Forecast in Five will feature brief interviews with executives representing a number of industries where we make an effort to better understand their roles and how they make decisions within their respective organizations. Joining me today is Joe Brasuelos. Joe is Principal and Chief Economist with RSM, serving as a leading voice of the middle market and the U.S. economy. Joe has more than 20 years of experience as an economist specializing in the accounting industry. He is committed to identifying conditions and trends in the U.S., as well as the global economy, to help RSM's clients prosper in an age of rapid transformation. Welcome, Joe, and appreciate you joining us today. Thanks for having me on, Seth. Well, let's get started with some questions. Um, Joe, can you explain what your role as the chief economist at RSM entails and some of the ways you and your team collaborate with RSM clients? All right. So what I'm supposed to do in my, in my role is to make sure that I inform and provide a forward look to our chief executive and our executive team what's happening in the U.S. economy and financial markets in real time so that it feeds into our own internal forecast with respect to our revenues so we can properly manage our portfolio of, of resources, of capital, and of people. Very helpful. Well, RSM has a distinct focus in specializing on serving middle market organizations. Can you define what the middle market is and how this unique expertise allows RSM's clients to benefit? So the best way to think about the middle market is it's the American real economy. While it's not the mythological small business that strives uphill and makes things happen, but really isn't that big of a deal anymore, nor is it the great big global multinational firms who really are critical, right? The middle market or the American real economy constitutes about 40% of the $27 trillion U.S. GDP, and they employ about a third of the 158 million people who are actively working right now. So it's, it's this great, big, thriving, dynamic portion of a much larger ecosystem. And that niche is who we provide to our consulting services, our audit services, and our accounting services. Good. It's good to know. Joe, you've worked for many well-respected organizations, Bloomberg and Moody's, among others. And many UCLA Anderson MBA graduates will be pursuing careers in finance. Is there any advice that you can share with those looking to advance into leadership roles within the industry? Make sure you take advantage of your time at UCLA to really understand what's meant by the multidisciplinary process. Because when you get out in the real world um, with respect to finance, you're going to find that there's an intersubjective reality that it's not just going to be raw numbers, that, that leadership matters, that integrity matters, that you know how to manage a diverse set of people within the framework of finance or international finance. And it's critical that you would obtain those skill sets so that as you move forward in your career, you have you've created a platform whereby you can advance and use those skills that you acquired at UCLA. That's going to be great, helpful for our students. Um, Joe, you spend a significant amount of time traveling to client locations, both in the U.S. and internationally. What would you say are the most important attributes for an executive today while doing business in a global environment? Well, to understand that even if the United States economy is $27 trillion, and it is the main engine of economic and financial activity. It's not the only engine. And that is, we move forward. The global economy is going to grow in ways that we can't quite anticipate. That that era of globalization, of, of unfettered free market, movement of people, movement of, of goods, movement of capital, is, is changing. And that one has to be attenuated to understanding how those changes are going to impact your firm while simultaneously understanding that the digital realm, the digitalization of the global economy is considering on a, is moving on a separate track. And the synthesis of the two will define how you manage your operation, whether you're managing global Forex risk or you're simply working for a firm that, that's part of a larger import-export uh, ecosystem. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, where do you see the profession of being an economist going over the next five years? 
All right. So the the role of the economist and I think the discipline of, of economics is undergoing a rapid uh, modernization. And I use that term modernization with purpose. You know, I think that if, if you're studying economics, whether you're in a formal master's or PhD program or you're an economist getting an MBA, you're going to have to ground yourself in in what's going on with respect to data science. I think that a grounding in Python is absolutely critical. Understanding how to under how to use large data sets, um, and how to un, how to use those to provide a compelling narrative about where the economy is and where it's going, so that the forward look is grounded in in a, both an objective and empirical reality because the changes in the global economy are such size and scale that many times when you talk to the civilians, the, even the most well-educated, they sometimes will look and respond in ways that might surprise you. And the, the first response may be disbelief simply because the size, the scale, and the numbers are so large that it just doesn't make sense given who they are and where they work in the, in the, in the economy. Understood. Thanks, Joe. Um, well, that brings us to the end of today's episode. Joe, thanks again for taking out the some time to be with us. Always happy to talk with you, Seth. Thanks, uh, and thanks to all our viewers for tuning in. We'll see you on the next episode of The Forecast in 5.